Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here and welcome to my best value buyer's guide for the best e-mountain bikes for 2020. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we do a lot of mountain bike group tests, reviews, these buyer's guides, as well as some vlogs too. So if you're just here for the bikes, click ahead to this time here. Otherwise, you can listen to me talk about a bit of the rationale for picking these bikes and what I look for when I'm picking an e-mountain bike. So we're not here to discuss the pros and cons of e-bike. You're here because you want one. I think e-bikes are great. I know people have issues with trail access or the purists, but there's definitely a lot of benefits that e-bikes offer. Whether you're getting a bit older, you have an injury, you just want to ride further for longer, or you just want to self-shuttle yourself, you don't have any friends to give you any shuttles, so you have to get an e-bike, there's so many reasons why you should get an e-bike. And as a result of that, the technology has really progressed a lot in the past few years. Every year the bikes are getting lighter, they're getting more maneuverable, they're getting closer and closer to what a normal bike feels like to ride, you're just getting a little bit of assistance. However, in the past year, we've probably seen the most radical changes in terms of the motor size, how the assistance feels, the batteries are a lot more integrated than what they used to be. There's been some huge changes and that's why you really wanna look at getting an e-bike from the past year or so because those changes have made a huge difference in how these bikes ride. The, the differences you're really gonna notice in the past few years, as I said, that integration, the weight's dropped massively and the gear has gotten a lot closer to a normal bike. So they're riding pretty similar to what a normal bike does these days. Okay, so let's get into what I look for in an e-mountain bike. So the first thing I look for is a removable battery. A lot of the older frames had semi-integrated removable batteries, so they did stick out a fair bit. However, now we're seeing a lot more integrated batteries, so they fit nicely into the frame, but they're still removable. And there's a few main reasons why I prefer a removable battery. One, you can remove the battery so the bike's easier to lift around. The second one's a big one in terms of reliability. E-bikes are new, there's going to be warranty issues. So the fact that you can remove the battery easily and send it away for warranty and then get a replacement battery easily for them. So you can just pick it up, buy one, or the place that's doing the warranty might have a spare one that you can use. And you can also hire the batteries, which is a huge thing too. So if you go down to say, fly down to Derby down in Tasmania and you can't take your battery because you can't take big batteries with you on the flight, then you can go down there and hire one. So that's a huge thing that I definitely look for in an e-bike. And then the third thing, it makes room for a water bottle cage. So if it's integrated in the frame, then you can clear it up and then you've got that space on top for a water bottle cage. So that's a big one too. Not with the semi-integrated batteries, that's kind of a limitation there, but with the integrated ones, you can have that bottle cage on the top. And as I said, the fourth thing, you can hire the battery if you go anywhere. But that second reason with the warranties, that's a big one for me. So the second thing I look for is getting that geo as close to a normal bike as possible. And that's made possible by these smaller motors. So you've got the Shimano E7000 motor and the E8000 motor. That really pioneered the way that you could get those shorter chainstays on these bikes to make them feel like a normal bike. And then also the new Bosch Performance CX motor. That's a huge change for them. The old motor was a lot bigger and you had those really long chainstays. With the new one, it's made a lot more compact in the rear and it's made the bike feel a bit more balanced when you ride it easy to flick it around. It's a big improvement from how these bikes used to handle. And I know some people prefer longer chain stays on e-bikes because they climb up ridiculously steep things or something like that. But the most people that I've run into that ride e-bikes, they're just riding the normal trails that we normally do. So those really, really long chain stays aren't too much of a benefit there. And then you can have a grippier tire in the rear to get that traction, which normally would slow you down on a normal bike. But on an e-bike, that's not an issue. So yeah, just put a grippier tire on the rear and those short chain stays, not a negative for me. The next thing I look for 27.5 plus or 29 inch wheels. Personally, I prefer 29 inch wheels. That's just what I prefer. But having those bigger tires with the 27.5 plus, a bit more traction. But I feel 29 with the rollover and the traction that you get from 29 inch wheels, although not as much as those, it's a bit more of a direct feeling, a bit more precise, and I prefer that. The next thing I look for is having that battery and motor low and as central as possible. So keeping that center of balance really low makes going to be railing the corners a bit easier. It's just going to help with traction, how the bike handles. So that's a big thing that I look for too. The next thing I look for is a system that uses all the same brand parts. So if we're having a Shimano one, then I want a Shimano battery, motor, display, all that kind of stuff, or Bosch, same thing around. It just makes diagnostics a lot easier. And if there's warranty issues, just everything communicates a lot better. And as I said, e-bikes are new technology. So anything that you can do to reduce the issues with warranties, that's definitely gonna be beneficial. And with these things, if they can communicate better to each other, that's definitely the preferred route to go. And the last thing I look for is range. Again, this isn't a huge issue for me because three to four hour ride, you'll be able to get away with a 500 watt hour battery. Some people prefer a bigger battery. I'd prefer a 400 or a 500 just to keep the weight down. 
don't need to really carry the extra weight of a 700, but I know there are people that ride e-bikes to go as far as possible in an adventure and that kind of stuff. So I definitely see the value in both. So anything with a 500 to 700 watt hour battery should do the job. I know there's a lot of bikes out there that you can do rage extending and that kind of stuff like that with second battery and all that kind of stuff. And that's also a benefit of having a second battery that's removable, like you can just pop that in. So definitely having that second battery or remove one makes that less of an issue. But as I said, 500 to 700 watt hour battery is the way to go. So in this buyer's guide, we'll typically be focusing on more kind of your all mountain or enduro e-mountain bikes. I know there's some people that prefer hardtails and that kind of side, but for me, because you've got the assistance, I think this is the sweet spot. You don't really have the issue of carrying around the extra trouble that you would on a normal bike and it makes it less efficient. With an e-bike, that's kind of negated. Having something that all mounts and enduro range just makes it the most versatile as possible. And because you do have that extra weight, these bikes aren't gonna be as flickable as a normal bike. So carrying that extra travel, softening the ride a bit, isn't too much of an issue. So because we're talking about e-bikes, the prices are gonna be ridiculously high. So the term value is very relative here. But for me, value in terms of e-mountain bikes, you're looking at around 5,000 Australian dollars to 9,000 Australian dollars. So for those overseas, we're looking at around about three and a half thousand to six thousand US dollars, and then three thousand to five thousand British pounds. So before we go into the bikes, the last thing I want to clarify: Do you want to buy online versus in a bike shop? That's going to be entirely up to you. If you're confident in terms of working on a bike or issues with warranties or packing a bike up to send it back away for warranty, which may happen with an e-bike, they are a bit more temperamental than a normal bike. Then that's up to you. If you're comfortable to do that definitely going online is going to give you probably the best value. But if you want that deal support, easy run of diagnostics that you can get done at a bike shop, then there's going to be a few bike shop options in here too. So it's going to be entirely up to you, but they're both good options. Okay, so enough of me talking, let's get into the bikes. Okay, so the first bike we're going to be looking at is the Merida E160. So the original E160 was a bike I actually spent a fair amount of time on and actually really loved it. And the thing I loved about it, it was really a pioneer for e-bikes. It was the bike that really changed in terms of geometry, it was one of the bikes that had the really short chain stays with the Shimano E8000 step motor, and that made a big difference to how these bikes ride, so I really, really like this bike. And working in a bike shop that sold these bikes, I can definitely say they sold like hotcakes. People loved them. As soon as they got on one and rode it, they were sold. So it's definitely a bike that was really popular, and I can see why, and the new one really builds on the success of the old bike. So for 2020, on the lower price points, Merida kept the old frame and the higher end builds use the all new carbon frame. Both are great value respectively. In Australia, we get them a fair bit cheaper than the rest of the world. Don't know why it is, could just be the shipping route, but we do get them a fair bit cheaper. But both of those bikes are great value and even overseas, they're great value too. If you are on a budget, I would definitely go the 500 SE model at $5,499 recommended retail price in Australia. And that's definitely the one to go for. Use the old frame, it's well established and it's been really well reviewed and it's a real enduro ready e-bike. And as I said, it's a great frame, just missing out on that carbon frame that the new one has and a few geometry tweaks, but overall it's a great bike. Just uses that semi-integrated battery versus the integrated one on the new one. I would avoid the 800 SE model as for the same price, you can get the brand new frame, the 5000 model, carbon frame, integrated removable battery and wait for it, a bottle cage mount, that's huge. So yeah, that would be the model that I would go for if you're on kind of that mid-range price range. That 5,000 is definitely a great model to go for. On the 5,000, the spec is really good for the money. You get the less torquey E7000 motor, a little bit lighter, a little bit less torque, but again, not too much of an issue. As I said, you get the integrated E8035, and that's a 500 watt hour battery, which for me is more than enough. You get 150 millimeters of rear travel, and that's handled by the impressive Super Deluxe Select Plus rear shock. That's a really good shock, and you get the lockout too. And then you've got a 160 millimeter RockShox Gold 35 up front. So would prefer a Yari, but this is still a pretty good fork at this price point. It is a mullet bike, so you get a 29 Asagai up front, so really great tire, plenty of grip. And then the rear, you get a 2.6 DHR, and they come in the grippy Maxo compound too, as well as the Exo Plus casing, so a bit better puncture protection. I also like the drivetrain. You get a 1x10 Dior drivetrain, which is simple and effective, easy to replace, pretty bulletproof, so I really like that they've gone for that there. And then to round that package off, you've got my favorite brakes, the MT520s. These are awesome brakes, four piston Shimano brakes, great to see. And then you get the E7000 display switch, which is better than the E8000 as well. So that's good to see too. 
So let's take a closer look at the Geo. So it's a very comfortable geometry for a lot of people. So you've got a super high stack on the bike. So it's 650 millimeters. And that means you're going to be sitting really upright on that bike. So that's really good to see, especially in those long rides, carrying a heavier backpack, just going for a long ride in general. That's going to be a little bit better on your back. So that's good to see too. It also helps getting your weight back on the descents as well. And you're going to be absolutely railing the descents on this bike. So that's also a good thing too. It also makes the bike feel a little bit bigger than it is. So the 460 millimeter reach would probably be more like 470 on an equivalent bike with a slightly shorter stack. So that would be something that's a bit different that you would notice there. And that's in the size large. So my favorite part of the bike is the short 439.5 millimeter chain stays. So that's awesome to see, nice and short, make it feel like a normal bike. It's gonna be really flickable. And then you've got a steepish seat angle too. So that's 75.5 degree seat angle, make climbing easy. And mixed with that high stack, it's gonna be a nice comfortable position for you. And then also the head angle is a capable 65.5 degrees too. So half a degree slacker than last year. And that's gonna make it descend a little bit better than what it used to. So this is gonna be a really versatile bike and will suit a wide range of applications. It's upright for more older riders that do have some back issues. And it's also gonna be easier for riders who shred and just wanna get their weight further back. So shred ready for pinners at 150 millimeters of rear travel, and that's more than enough to get away with anything on an e-bike. If it was my money, personally, I'd probably go for the 7,000 model, a little bit more expensive, but you do get a hell of a lot more for that money. So you get a better fork, so Marzocchi fork up front. You also get that E8000 motor, so a little bit more torque. You get an SLX group set, but with the 5,000, if you wanted to upgrade that and put a better fork on that, that would be a good option too if you wanted to save a little bit of money now and save a little bit for extra later, and then you can upgrade that fork. So the best thing about these bikes, they come from a bike shop. So you've got full Shimano motor, battery displays, all the stuff's gonna be really easy, integrates really well, gonna be good for warranties, hiring, diagnostics, all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be a breeze with this bike. And if you do live in Australia, hell of a great value as well. So definitely check this one out. And especially worldwide too, if you've got Merida, I know Merida isn't available in the US, but anywhere else, definitely check out this bike. So the next bike is one for our UK and Euro viewers. Don't worry people from the US, there's definitely some bikes coming later in the list. And the bike is the Vetus E Escarp. So there is also the Vetus E Summit, which is a great value bike too, for someone who prefers a little bit of extra travel as well as 27.5 inch wheels. I just prefer the versatility of the Scarp and the 29 inch wheels as well as the travel that it has. So the build to go for is definitely the entry level ES Scarp at 3,199 British pounds. The Escarp uses a semi-integrated Shimano battery, which is 504 watt hours. And this bike's readily available as one of the most popular e-bike batteries out when they first came out. So definitely readily available if you wanna hire it or if there's any replacements or anything like that. One downside is there's no bottle cage mounts on the bike, but at this price, a more integrated battery isn't as big of an issue. You also get the E7000 steps motor. So as I said, a bit less torque than the E8000 unit, but still a great unit. There's a lot of well thought out kit as well. So you get the E7000 switch, which is definitely a bit cleaner than the E8000 and opens it up for the one by dropper post remotes. And it's also a mullet setup too. So you get the Exo Plus Asagai up front with 2.5 inch width, and that's an awesome tire, love it. Plenty of grip. I've definitely done a lot of riding on this tire and I've done a review too. I'll put the link in the description for that. And then you get a 27.5 inch DHR XO Plus in the rear and they come in the Max Terra compound. So really good to see. And you also get that Dior 1x10 drivetrain. And as I said on the Merida, great drivetrain. I really like it, reliable, pretty bomb proof. And then you get a Bomber Z2 fork up front. So really like this fork, feels great and great value for money. And it's e-bike optimized too. So that's really good to see. And that's got 140 millimeters of travel. You also get short cranks, so 165 millimeter cranks, which is great to see on an e-bike. And then you get a Deluxe R rear shock, and that's controlling the 140 millimeters of rear travel. So 140 in the rear, as well as 140 up front. If you wanna make it a bit more capable, bump that fork travel up to 150 up front. And the weight's pretty respectable too, so it's 22.5 kilos. So that's really good to see on a bike at this price point. And another thing I really like about the bike is the GO2. So with that Shimano Steps motor, you get nice short chain stays, so 444 millimeters, which is perfect. And then you've got 467 millimeter reach on the size large. So that's nice and balanced, gonna give plenty of room for most people. And as I said, on the size large, you get a decently steep seat angle at 75 degrees and a 65 degree head angle. So that's gonna be a really versatile package for someone who wants to do all mountain and enduro riding. 
So as I said, really versatile bike, great for all day adventures. If you do have a little bit of extra cash, there's the VRS model, and that's pretty damn tiled too. So you get a Fox 36 up front, good wheels, E8000 motor, SLX drivetrain. But I would go the entry level build, and if you have a little bit of extra money, I'd definitely check out one of the other bikes that we've got in this list. So the next bike is finally one that's available worldwide and it's even available in a bike shop and that's the Trek Rail. For a bike shop brand, an integrated Bosch removable battery as well as the new Bosch Performance CX motor, the price of the entry level Rail 7 is pretty damn good value at 7999 Australian dollars. It's a huge improvement on their previous e-bikes. It's almost like a Bosch equivalent of the E160, although the rail has a slightly slacker head angle at 64.9 degrees or 64.5 depending on the flip chip location and a slightly longer reach at 470 or 465 millimeters on the size large depending on the flip chip position. Although the stack is a little bit lower than the Merida, so it would be pretty similar if you're sitting on the bike. So sizing pretty similar between these bikes. It also has a short 448 millimeter chainstay and decently steep 75 degree seat angle. On the 7 you get some decent spec too, so you get an e-bike optimized Yari up front as well as a deluxe rear shock with 160mm of travel up front and 150mm in the rear. You get a mixture of XT and SLX 12 speed drivetrain, my favourite drivetrain out at the moment. You get short 165mm cranks and my favourite Shimano MT520 brakes, awesome brakes. Put some center pattern there and these things will stop anything and then you also get some good wheels too and it's a 29er which is my favorite for an e-bike just a little bit more wrapped with 2.6 inch xr5 team issue tires so decent puncture protection on these tires and decent volume too so it's going to be nice and comfortable and give you a lot of grip too the weight is pretty good too at 23.65 kilos again not the lightest but considering it does have a 625 watt hour battery, which offers a bit more range than the Shimano equipped bikes, which have 504 watt hours. This is pretty good. So all things considered, as I said, pretty good weight. Like the E160, it's a really versatile bike and the integration is great. As I said, get that bottle cage mount, which is good to see and integrated removable batteries are my favorite. And it's gonna make warranties really easy as well. Full Bosch system, gonna make diagnostics easy. And then you can pick up a spare battery if something's going wrong with yours. So it's a great buy. And if you go down to Derby, if you go on a flight, the e-bike store down there definitely does a lot of treks as well. So they're gonna have a few spare batteries and I think you can hire them too. So that's good to see as well. The next bike is possibly the best value carbon e-bike available at the moment. And again, it's one for our Euro viewers and that's the brand new Radon Render. So now if you aren't familiar with Radon, like Vetus, like being the house brand of Chain Reaction Cycles, Radon is the same for German online sales company Bike Discount. So you get that great direct-to-consumer value with these bikes. So there are four models available, all with the same carbon frame using the brand new Bosch Performance CX motor, so that nice small motor, and it has a 625 watt-hour removable integrated battery, and again, get those bottle cage mounts, so that's awesome to see. So yeah, it's a Bosch power tube battery, which is really good. So the best value model is definitely the entry-level 8.0 build at 3,999 euros but there are other builds that are awesome value too, such as the 9.0 build, which for an extra 800 euros, you get a lot more. So if you can afford it, I definitely get it. You get upgraded suspension, SLX 12 speed drivetrain, as well as XT brakes. There's also the 10.0 and 10.0 HD, which heavy duty model, which gets a little bit of extra travel. So you get a 160 millimeter fork up front instead of the normal 150 and all the other models. So taking a closer look at the 8.0, you do get some great parts for the money. And as I said, this is definitely the best value build. So you get an e-bike specific Lyric up front, and then you also get a Deluxe Select Plus rear shock with 150 millimeters up front, as I said, and then 140 in the rear. You get Megura brakes, so good stopping power, short 165 millimeter cranks, SX Evil drivetrain. But the best part is definitely that Bosch motor with the integrated removable battery. So as I said with the old Performance CX motor, had great torque and then also had the intuitive e-mountain bike mode which was really good and definitely really intuitive. However, it was definitely big so you had those long chainstays but as I said, that's not a problem anymore and compared to the 480mm chainstays you used to get on the old Bosch motors, on this one here you get chainstays of 458mm which is definitely a bit longer than say the Trek Rail but yeah, it's still pretty short compared to what they used to be and that's definitely awesome to see. 
So on the size large, the reach is 460 millimeters. So that's pretty common for these kind of bikes. So not super long, but definitely pretty comfortable. You've got a 65.5 degree head angle. So nice and balanced there. Good for all mountain enduro riding. Steepish seat angle at 75.5 degrees. So it's definitely a great all mountain bike and it's an awesome carbon bike as well. And then you get that integrated system. So that's definitely one to check out for. If you're definitely Euro, this is definitely probably the ones to get. So the next bike's another one that's direct consumer and it's available pretty much worldwide. And that's the brand new for 2020 Commensal Meta Power 29. So I actually did a review on the old Commensal Meta Power 29 and I felt like it was a really versatile all mountain bike and it was definitely had a bit of pop to it. So it didn't lose that pop ability, which a lot of e-bikes because of the weight definitely lose a little bit of that, but it was really playful and I really enjoyed that bike. But the new one's a separate beast. It's definitely one for the self shuttler or someone who's really out there to slay the descents, just go up a fire trail and just absolutely bomb them. This bike has got a lot going for it. It ticks a lot of boxes for me personally, especially the essential build at $7,999 Australian dollars. There is one model below the essential build that uses the old frame. So like the old E160, which is available this year, it still uses that semi-integrated battery at $6,999 Australian dollars. But for the extra thousand dollars, 100% I would get the new frame, unless you are looking for a bike that has slightly less travel and you don't mind a semi-integrated battery. So with the essential build, you get an E8000 motor and my favorite E835 504 watt hour battery, which is nice and integrated and removable and opens up for a bottle cage mount, which is really good to see. And then for the suspension, you get 170 millimeters up front. So it really sets the intentions of this bike. It's a Fox 36 performance and that's e-bike optimized. And then you get a DPX2 managing the 160 millimeters of rear travel. Awesome to see you also get SLX 12 speed as well as SLX 4 pots with 203 millimeters front and rear. So you definitely have a lot of stopping power with this bike. You also get nice 165 millimeter cranks. So it's definitely awesome to see that all the bikes across these ones that I recommend have the shorter cranks because you definitely notice with an e-bike you're going to be clipping the pedals a little bit more and it's definitely something that I recommend. Another good thing to see, you get a double down Maxxis rear tire. It is an aggressor, so not my favorite tire, definitely for an e-bike where you do want a little bit more traction, but it's good to have a bit more puncture protection. And then you've got the Asa guy up front, so my favorite tire up front. And there's other spec that's really thought out too. So as I said, you get the bottle cage mounts, you get a chain guard, and then you also get a bash plate up against the motor as well. So it's definitely really sets the intentions of this bike and it's really well thought out. And as with all common style bikes, they're pretty damn bulletproof. So if you want a bike that you can absolutely slay in the descents and don't want to worry about it, this is definitely the one for you. So the Geo also sets the intention of this bike. So you got a 65 degree head angle, got a nice steep 77 degree seat angle. So that's going to be really good on those steep climbs. You got a decently long reach to it, 475 millimeters on the large, and then you've got 453 millimeter chain stays. So definitely built to shred. So as I said, if you live somewhere with long climbs for gnarly downhills, definitely get this bike. The essential build is definitely my pick, but the team as well as the signature builds are awesome value too. So as you know, with common style bikes, direct to consumer, great value there. And definitely check those out if you want some higher end spec. But yeah, the essential build is definitely my pick. So the last bike is another one that's direct to consumer and it's available pretty much worldwide. And that's the YT Radon. I'm not going to talk about this bike. I'll let someone who's ridden the bike for six months talk about it. And that's Sam from Sam Bikes. So I'll send it over to Sam and he can talk to you about the bike. Riders, how are we doing? Phil's asked me to have a chat to you about the YT Decoy. I bought the YT Decoy about four months ago. Um, I love the bike. It's an amazing e-bike. Uh, when I was buying the e-bike, there was three standout. I think we all have three bikes when we're looking at buying a new one. For me was the Merida E160, the Propane Ecano, and the YT Decoy. Why did I end up going for the Decoy? Well, I love the Decoy. I love the look of the bike. It's a beautiful looking bike. Carbon mainframe. I went for the base model, 4,600 euros. Not sure what that is in Aussie dollars or US, but you guys can work that out. I like the bike because the geometry, it's got a pretty, it's got a 440 chainstay, 65, 60, 65, 65 and a half head angle. Um, Shimano motor, which I really like. The, it's got a 540 watt hour battery. Um, it's, a not, it's a really nice overall package. And the reason why I went for the decoy, the base model, is because you get a beautiful frame. 
you get pretty good components, but the bike is super upgradable. Um, I bought the bike stock, as I said, 4,600, and at the moment I've changed the brakes to the XT4 pistons, which I love. I know Phil loves them as well. And uh, I changed the bar and stem to a rental fat bar and a Industry 9 uh, stem. And in the following week, I'll be changing the charger to a 2.1 charger, making the Yari actually a Lyric. So all these upgrades right now, I spent 200, 200 euros on the brakes, but I sold the old ones for 150. So that cost me 50. Then I bar and stem, I had them, but let's say, and they're not a necessary, they're not, you don't need to change the bar and stem at all. Um, and the charger, the charger was 200 euros. So we're talking 250 euros so far of upgrades and I will do the rear shock. I'm just looking for a deal. I was hoping to find one in Black Friday, but there hasn't been any. Um, I will change the shock to probably an X2 and I'll probably pay 500, 550 euros for that shock. So that will make the bike, that's about a 750 euro upgrade. So making it about 5,200 euros. And for me, dollar for dollar, I think, or euro for euro, I think it's the best e-bike on the market for the money and how you can upgrade it. Phil, thanks for the shout out. Thanks for asking me to recommend these e-bikes. These e I would say my top three, still for 5,000 euros or around 5,000 euros is the decoy, the Ecano from Propane, but I believe in Australia you can't get that, maybe I'm wrong. And the Merida E160 is still a cracking bike, the old one. Um, it's around 5,000 euros in Spain, but in Australia it's very, it's very good value. I think it's six and a half grand. And it comes with Fox Kashima front and back, uh, Four Piston Saints, it is a beautiful bike for the money. Anyway, Phil, thanks for the shout out. Glad I could help. And riders, if you don't know my channel, Sam's Bikes, dedicated e-bike channel on YouTube, check it out. I'd love to get some subs. <laughs> and enjoy Phil's Buyer's Guide. He does a great job. And uh, Phil, total respect, buddy. I know how much work it is and you're doing a great job. And you're getting all the success you deserve. See you later. Thanks for that, Sam. And if you're interested in some more e-bike content, definitely check out his channel. I'll put the link in the description to this video. He's doing his own buyer's guide, but it's more of a process from purchasing the bike and all that kind of stuff in detail there. So definitely check that out on his channel. So there you go. There's my buyer's guide for the best value e-mountain bikes for 2020. I know I've missed out on a few and that was pretty much intentional. Having that removable battery is definitely a deal breaker for me. I want a removable battery on these bikes. If I'm traveling somewhere that I can hire it, if there's issues or anything like that, having that removable battery is definitely integral for me. So there are bikes like the Turbo Levo, which is a great bike by itself, but not having that removable battery is definitely a deal breaker for me. I like to travel and I don't like time off the bike. And if I have issues with that bike, that's something that would happen. So that's definitely something you're gonna to have to think about when you're purchasing these bikes. But if I did miss out on any bikes, definitely leave a comment and I'll put in the pin post and that way we can build on this buyer's guide throughout the year if any new bikes come out. Or if you do want to argue the point that you prefer an integrated battery in terms of the frame, tell me why. I'm happy to have a discussion about it. I'm always happy to learn some new things. So yeah, definitely do that as well. So if you enjoyed the video, definitely give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel. Got plenty of buyer's guides coming up in the future and do some more e-bike related content in the future too. And definitely leave a comment as well. And as always, thanks for watching guys, see ya.